Hey friends, today we're going to start a series about designer developer handoff, which basically means that if you finish your beautiful final design, you have to hand it off to the developer for them to code it. But that can be very tricky. Some developers don't understand design the way we do, and they code it in a way where it's kind of sort of what you wanted, but not exactly. It used to be a lot more difficult, but with the proper tools, you should avoid most of the issues that I used to have when I was starting my design career. This video is sponsored by Zeppelin, which is a designer developer collaboration tool. And this fits perfectly because this is a tool that actually helps avoid a lot of the problems that people are facing with the design execution in the front end side. The main problem developers have with coding design is that they see a design, but they don't really see it as we see it. So they try to put that design into code and to have a working version of it, but of course they might miss some things. One of the common problems that they face is missing alignment. So they kind of place something and it's almost in the right spot, but not exactly. And that happens a lot to buttons or to content on the cards and stuff like that. The shadows and the gradients can look a lot different when they're coded. So it's really important to actually remember a couple of rules. And one rule is that if you're doing a gradient, never stretch the handles outside of the element because it's impossible to code it that way. To avoid the guesswork and to actually be able to copy some CSS or some other kinds of code to make it easier for developers, tools like Zeppelin can simplify the process and make it a lot faster. You simply synchronize it with your design tool and you can use Sketch or Figma, whatever you prefer. You just use the Zeppelin plugin, simply select the artboards or the frames in Figma and then export. And what I really like about this is that at some point it's just tickling the back end and I find it extremely funny. It's a very good use of microcopy. And then these designs exist in Zeppelin in a forum that's easy to access by the developers. It has all the assets in there. It has all the distances from all the elements and everything that developers need to actually code it right. Today Zeppelin is launching a couple of new features and I think that they are quite interesting for designers, especially one of them can be quite useful if you're a junior designer building your portfolio and starting your first case studies. And that is a feature called Flows. Let me show you. When your screens get synced into Zeppelin, you simply right click on them and click Add to Flow. And once I do that, of course, I'm going to rearrange them a little bit because this registration screen should be after the onboarding like this. Then I simply click on flows on the top of the screen and we get into the flows view. Now this is simple. You click on a button and you see four dots on each side. Those dots serve as anchors to connect the button to a screen. So as you can see, I connected the green button to the second onboarding screen. And now I can connect one of the little dots that show the progress back to the very first initial screen. And then we have one more button that I can connect to the last onboarding screen. In many of my standard flows, I use a different color and different line format for going back. So in my case, I'm going to change the lines for going back to red. And this is a very simple onboarding flow of going back and forth in the onboarding process. But of course, a simple flow like that is not really that interesting. So let's add more screens to it. In this app, right when you finish onboarding, you don't need to create an account because you go straight to the closest store to you. And then when you want to purchase something, you go to the account creation process. So I'm going to connect the last button to this screen. And this time I'm going to change the color of the line to green because this is one of the main events of that flow. What's really cool is that when you move the screens, the arrows follow them automatically. So you can simply rearrange it for maximum clarity. And in some other tools that I used, actually the arrows didn't follow. So you had to reconnect them every time. And in design tools, the lines go over the screen. So they create even more visual mess. Here it's all clean. And if you need to modify a line, you can always click on those connectors and simply create it coming from a different angle of the element. Another thing that I did in my case study course was to always differentiate the back arrows, not only by color, but also by their style. So in here, you can do that as well by changing the lines from solids to dashed. It makes it a lot clearer to see where you are. You can add multiple screens to a flow by creating a section, then naming it, and then clicking this little icon here on the right that adds the entire section to the flows. I added the rest of the screens to this flow, and then I'm going to connect them into their own flow which is going to be starting with the category here that says vegetables. Then we're going to display the vegetables, then the actual detail page of a product, and then adding it to cart and the delivery process. 
Once you connect all the screens with arrows, you can then add labels and tooltips on top of the lines. So in this case, I'm just going to write view product and you can move this element across the line, which is really cool because when you stretch the line or move the screen somewhere, it's going to stay in place on the line. And this is going to be a lot easier to actually keep some clarity. I'm just going to call one of them view product, the other view category. And for the obvious ones, like going back, we're not going to add a label. I added a couple more connections and a couple more labels. And now I'm going to connect the final step of the process with just pay and deliver. And I'm going to connect it to a screen that says delivery in progress. To that line, I'm going to add an appropriate tooltip as well. One thing worth doing once you figure out the actual good layout of the screens is to align those tooltips to be in roughly the same height because that way it's going to make it a lot easier to read. So I'm just going to move them slightly a little bit so they're all aligned. And yeah, that looks a lot better. You can also categorize flows by simply selecting a bunch of screens and adding them to a group. And that group is a subflow. So I'm going to call this first one onboarding and then I'm going to select all the other screens and those are going to be purchase process. Now some final color tweaks to replace the colors and then as you can see you can move entire flows and then only the connector between them gets changed. Flows like that are really great for your case studies. And of course, as intended, they're also great for developers to show them what connects to what and how. When working with developers, it's also good to give them as much context as possible. And you can use annotations and comments for that. Comment is something that basically is connected to a specific point on the screen, while an annotation is something that is visible because it's really important. So it's kind of like a comment that you can see all the time. I'm going to create an annotation here for the developers to show them how those decorative elements, so the leaves and the fruits and vegetables, should animate when the screen is first loaded. And what's really cool is that you can also attach GIFs to it. So I created a GIF animation that actually shows it, and then I'm going to attach it and it's going to play in line here. And once you post it, you can see the GIF is playing both in the right window here and on the annotation panel on the right side as well. This is really helpful because one of the main rules of working with developers is show don't tell because they're going to understand something visible a lot faster. Once you create more comments and more annotations of different types, you can then filter them on the right side in the panel so the developers can actually filter out only the things that are necessary for them to do first. And that makes it a lot easier when there is a lot of different things to be done. And if some developers are doing just the animation and others are doing the API connections, they can simply filter out the stuff that's not relevant to them. The key to success with coding a design project is really good communication. So if you set up some patterns and some ways that your developers understand what you're doing and what you want to accomplish, it simply is a lot faster to use a dedicated tool like that to deliver the handoff. Even in the free version of the tool, you could create flows with up to 10 elements. And this is something that actually works quite well for a case study because you rarely show longer flows than that. And if you want to see how it works yourself, just go to zeppelin.io and register with the free account. Because I think this is a very useful feature, especially for portfolio building. And that's it for today. In the next episode of Designers vs Developers, we'll talk a bit more about the most common mistakes developers make when coding your design and how you can communicate your ideas to the developers and also how much coding you should learn as a designer to speak their language and it's surprisingly little so stay tuned stay subscribed and have a beautiful day cheers uh -huh.